the beginning of our program, we looked at Surah Al-Fatiha and we looked at the verse Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. On the face of it, this verse seems pretty obvious that uh, we are praising Allah, the master of multiple universes. Now from our perspective, there certainly are multiple universes. There is the earth on which we find, which we find ourselves. And then we live within our own constellation. Then there are multiple such constellations. But when the Arabs of Arabia heard this particular verse, they saw this as a challenge to their faith system. Not because it was singing the praises of a God who was the master of multiple universes, but because it was tearing down the structure and the mindset in which they found themselves. So think about it, but let's look at what life must have been like, say, 10,000 years ago. So people lived in some remote area of Siberia. I don't know what the migra migratory pattern was, but you know, let's just assume they lived in, in, in Africa, because they say life started in Africa. And so they lived in a particular village in Africa. And others lived a few hundred miles away. We assume that those who lived in village A understood what that village B existed, and they also understood that they had a particular view of life, and all of the rest. Whatever we assumed about ourselves, we assumed the, the others had the same pattern, and that's not true. And now that I bring this to your attention, you would say, yeah, it's, it's even absurd to think that way. What mechanism did they have access to that would have given them an idea as to their existence vis-a-vis -vis the other group? As far as group A was concerned, that alone was their world. That was their alam. Get it now? This was their universe. The God they worshipped was a God of their universe. And the God that people worshipped in village B was the God of their universe. They had no other universe. This is how mankind progressed through centuries until we reached the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah introduces humanity to an idea not just of his existence but of his universal existence that he exists not in a village not in a community not in village too but throughout the world hence Rabbul Alameen. You may have heard about the story of the Kaaba. And the Kaaba was on the one hand the house of Allah, which they accepted. This was the, the Abrahamic aspect of Meccan belief. But the Kaaba also housed multiple idols. Each idol represented a particular village a particular community, a particular idea of who God was. And so they would bring their idol to the Kaaba as, as their participation in this one Godness. So Tawheed is that, is humanity's progress from living in, in, in holes, in caves, to, to realizing that you're actually part of a global unity. And so when, when Rasulullah breaks down, The truth has come and falsehood is bound to perish. This falsehood was regional. It applied to particular communities. Even the Jews did not get this right. They had the idea of Allah being the creator of the universe. 
but they fell short of him being the Lord of the universe. Therefore, he was what for them? He was their Lord. His the universal God's relationship was to a particular home, a particular community. And along comes this one verse of the Quran, and it shatters that whole historical precedent that was the development of hum the human psyche. Who are we? If you, if you spend time thinking about this, how did we get from realizing that someone lives in a small village in southeast Michigan to someone coming to the realization that actually I'm part of a humanity that incl includes people from the Andes to Siberia, from Finland to South America to South Africa. That took us thousands of years. And our understanding of Ilah, Allah, God expanded accordingly. Until we get to the time of Rasulullah and we read this particular verse every day in our salah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is the God of the universes. And you ought to worship Him alone. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah.